button and this is the Murph. Before we say any more, let's just hear a sound out of it. I'm just going to put in a straight chord like that. Then when I mix it over to put it through the main body of the machine. <laughs> Enough. It's a very strange beast. I'll be honest, I'd seen these things on the internet. I'd seen people play guitars through them, but nobody had ever actually gone through the nitty gritty of everything it actually does. And uh, I didn't know what it could do for me or if I needed one. I knew I wanted one because it's got Moog on the front and it's covered in buttons. Anything with Moog and buttons, I want one. My life's pretty simple like that. But gosh, what does it actually do? Anyway, as you can see, I've now acquired one. I've made this video in case you're wondering what this could do for you. And I'm trying to take you through every single thing I've found on it. And that includes a secret weapon. It's got something secret that hardly anybody ever talks about. I'll show you that. And the other thing is, this machine is responsible for one of the most nerdish things in the whole of music. I'll be showing you that later as well. Something to look forward to. OK, you sit there, baby, and we'll take a closer look at you. MERV stands for Multiple Resonant Filters, and here they are, there's eight of them. They're like little tone controls, but oh, so much nicer. Right, I'm going to put some noise in. Noise is the orange wire. You'll see the different coloured wires make different sounds later on. OK, here we go. That's the noise coming through, it's completely dry. The filters are doing nothing. As I turn the mix over, it's gone quiet. The reason is all the filters are turned down. But as I turn them up... Each filter is a little tiny little band pass, a very finely tuned little tone control. And if you mess with these, honestly, this part, you don't need the rest of the machine. This part is just really nice. But what makes it really nice on this machine is that on the MIDI Murph, there's two frequency ranges. So if I click this switch, the frequency switch, here comes the bass range. Originally, there was two separate pedals, one for the middle frequencies, then the bass Murph had bass frequencies, but the MIDI Murph has got both lots. Right, at this point, it's time to introduce the secret weapon. <laughs> Here it is. Can you see there, there is a tiny little switch that just says LFO. For me, it's one of the nicest things on this machine. But the only evidence this machine's got this is this one little switch here on the control panel. You've got to click it and then listen very carefully to what's going on. Can you hear the frequencies of all the filters are very slowly rising and falling? And this LFO is such a good idea. The sad thing is, is that the machine hardly capitalized on it, but I know how to, and I'm going to show you what to do. It's just great. If you look in the back of the Moog, like any other well-behaved Moog, I'm just going to pull that out and bit less noise. <laughs> You'll see there's loads and loads of sockets and you can plug in control voltages which will turn all these buttons and knobs and things for you. Look at that. There's a little MIDI one on this one. I'll talk about that very, very briefly later on. But most importantly from our point of view is this one here. Look at that. LFO sweep. What you need to do is plug a control voltage into that and the best way of doing it is getting, <laughs> getting an expression pedal and you can either use the Moog expression pedal well, you can do what I did. I'll show you. <laughs> this is my expression pedal. Isn't it beautiful? 45 years ago, it was a colour sound wah fuzz pedal. Remember the first time I bought it and I plugged in my little cheap guitar in my dad's garage. I thought I was going to conquer the world. Never mind. I've no idea what happened to the insides. These things are about 400 quid now to buy one of these new. Anyway, this has now become my expression pedal, and very good it is as well, I have to say. So it's lovely it's still here and working in some strange capacity. Let's find that noise wire, plug it into the berth, and see what happens. There we go. That's a bit of noise. At the moment, the LFO switch is in the off position, and I'll just turn this pedal sideways so you can see what's going on. If I just do that now, it's sweeping the filters up and down. If I click the LFO on, it adjusts the speed of the LFO. And if you set these right, 
you get a really nice sort of phase sound. I don't like phases very much, to be honest, but this, is something really sweet about it. I really like that. I think that's great. You put it onto bass. It's really powerful. I'm going to be showing you... Oh, in stereo, by the way. It's amazing. Later on, I'm going to be recording this in such a way that it sounds good in stereo. At the moment, this is just a mono feed, as you probably gathered. But I can't get over, though. The only control for the LFO on this entire box is that one little switch, on or off. It should have an LFO speed button somewhere. I don't know where they'd fit it, but it needs one. Okay. Let's now find out what this lot do. So far, the filters have been active all the time. Sometimes the faders have been up, sometimes they've been down, but they've always been on. However, this machine can turn them on and off in groovy little patterns. <laughs> the knob here actually controls which pattern you're getting. And so far, we've had pattern one, which just means all the filters are on all the time. There we go, we've heard it. We're going to go to pattern two. What's happening now is the machine is stepping through the filters, firing them one at a time. You can change the rate. And you can change how long they fire for. Little shots. Longer shots. Almost like an old steam train sound coming up here. Reverse envelope. Here's the instruction book. And the instruction book's got little diagrams showing you how all these things go. This is pattern two. And the little black boxes show the pattern of the filters opening. This is pattern three. Pattern four. And so on. Chuck that away. I'm going to move on to bass now. When you click from mids to bass, you get a completely different set of patterns here. Of course, what you can do for a bit of fun is knock out some of these and get rhythms. Right, I'm going to break a rule, a rule that I thought I never would break making these videos, but here we go. Earlier on, you might remember, I rather begrudgingly told you there's a MIDI socket on the back of this thing. Well, I don't like MIDI very much. I did a lot of it in the 80s and 90s. I did a lot of music. I enjoyed it, but you forget to feel the vibrations. It's not like playing a real piano or a real guitar. And so these days, I'm afraid I've turned me back on MIDI. But look. MIDI socket, and there was a MIDI yeah. socket there. I've got a MIDI wire, I joined them up. It worked first time, and it's so easy, I'm going to show you what it does. First of all, key F here starts the pattern. This is pattern two that we've heard. Okay, you hear that? The octave of eight notes down here mutes the individual filters. So if I hold a few down, you start getting little rhythms. You can see where we're going there, can't you? This octave here just fires the filters individually. This octave here opens them up. So if you're into computers and you're doing MIDI with this thing, you can send notes on messages and work the filters that way. Uh, this one at the top here, be quiet. <laughs> this one just advances the sequence one at a time. I don't know if that's going to be any use to you whatsoever, but I've told you, so now you know. <laughs> okay, so far we've heard a lot of sounds made from noise. Uh, technically, it's the best way of showing you what this thing does, but uh, it's not the most musical or pretty. So we've got some different sounds coming off here, a couple of synths and a bit of guitar. I'm going to put these into the Murph, but what I'm going to do is the Murph has got, actually got stereo outputs. Filters 1, 3, 5 and 7 come out one side and 2, 4, 6, 8 come out the other side. And so I'm going to put this directly into the computer so the sound quality is going to be a little bit different. But if you're wearing earphones, it's going to make your eyes roll. OK, I hope you enjoy this.
there. I hope you enjoyed the demos. I didn't do too many because there's so many others already on the internet. In particular, look at the Moog website. They've got some great demos. But they haven't got the colour sound expression pedal. Mm. <laughs> right. That's about it, really. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks so much for watching and taking an interest. But you may remember, I did promise you, I was going to show you the most nerdish thing in music. You probably want to leave now. But if you're going to stay with me, listen to this. At the moment, this is what's going on, the most nerdish thing in music. Can you hear that? It's brilliant. Let me show you. This is pattern number nine. Can you make that out? It's called the Prime Number Rhythmicon, okay? It's on the bass settings. And what this is doing, let me just put this down for a second. Put all those down there. The lowest filter is firing every second beat, okay? This one fires every third beat, okay? Every fifth beat, seventh beat, eleventh, thirteenth, seventeenth, and nineteenth. It's all the low prime numbers, not one. We don't talk about whether one's prime or not, not going there. But the way prime numbers work is that when you first start this pattern off, all the filters fire at once. But then to find out when they next fire all at once, you have to multiply all the prime numbers together. So the number of beats it takes is this number. It's 9,699,690. Isn't that a lovely number? 6969, etc, etc, etc. At the moment, this is beating away at about two beats a second. I calculate that it's going to take about eight weeks before all eight filters fire again. So this is going to be the longest video on YouTube. But stay with me. You're going to love it. <laughs> are you still watching? Of course you are. Ah. <laughs>